spirit afresh. Let's give it to him. Let's stand up and worship the Holy Spirit. Let's worship the Holy Spirit afresh in this place. Let's worship God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Because of who he is, because of what he has done, because of what he will do in this service. Get excited in your spirit because Yahweh is on the move. Yahweh is on the move. The God of miracles is on the move. He's come here with healings in his wings. Let's give God praise. Let's worship him. Let's thank him. This is a great time to be alive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Thank you, choir. Let's give the choir fourfold a rousing, a rousing applause. The Lord will continue to bless your voices, bless your life, preserve like a resident pastor. We pray, we preserve your voices in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome you to a very special service because it's special. And you, 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 will, you will see it. If you have expectation, God will meet you at the point of need this morning in Jesus' name. I'm highly excited because of what uh, God opened my eyes to see. And sincerely, I will be the first beneficiary of what he will do this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I am grateful for this opportunity to share the word of God with you, God's people. It's a great privilege, and I must never take it for granted. I am very grateful to the leadership of our church, a general overseer, a mother in the faith, Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Sam and B.C. Aboeji. The Lord bless our leaders. I am eternally grateful for my boss, my ogre, the resident pastor, and his wife, both of them, are in the house this morning. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much for giving us themes that God can use to bless us and also for putting us in the service of God so that God can walk through us, speak to us, and speak to his people through us. I'm very, very grateful, sir. Amen. Amen. I salute all the pastors in the house, servants of the living God, and all our leaders in the house. Let's appreciate them, all of them. It's not easy to be a leader in Foursquare National Headquarters Church. And all the workers together, let's appreciate. Please appreciate yourself. The Lord bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. We have this morning, this month, and by one stroke of destiny, I'll be the first, you know, most times, by the time, you know, it gets to, I have the privilege of sharing our general overseer will have shared sometimes. Of course, the resident pastor will have shared. And then, um, you know, those of us, by the grace of God, we belong to other anointed ministers. We, you know, we then, we then start to share. Hallelujah. But by one stroke of divine, um, I mean, I mean, this is the first message on this thing. Am I right? Am I, am, yes, I think I'm correct. So that puts a burden of responsibility squarely on my shoulder. And I pray that as you listen, you pray for me, that God is going to help me. We need to set a tone. God spoke to my heart and he challenged me. And I pray that he's going to challenge us. We're going to do three parts and we'll run pretty very fast. One is the topic of today is seven habits of highly healthy people. Seven habits of highly healthy people. And it's going to be divided into three. We need to understand, first is understanding health and healing. The second is to look at the several habits. The third is for us to respond to God's word because it's going to do miracles here this morning in Jesus' name. And we need to move, oh, you don't believe it. Your amen is not good. Huh? We need to be believing believers. Say amen like people who believe. Amen. Shall we rise together as we pray? Lord, we thank you. We bow our hearts. We bow our knees in the name of Jesus. I bow my heart and knee. And I pray, Lord God, that it will please you that you release your spirit and your word unto us without measure. So that, Lord, you can bless us. It's your word. It's not my word. Lord, I pray. Please, Lord, bless us. 
please. It's your blessing that makes all the difference, Lord, I pray. It's your blessing that makes all the difference. Oh, Paul can plant and Apollo can water. But except you give the dew, nothing happens. Let your power arise in this congregation today. Heal the sick in the name of Jesus. Save the lost in the name of Jesus. Restore backsliders in the name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people said, praise the name of Jesus. Seven habits. We live in an interesting time. The last time we had issues like this in the world was a hundred years ago. When the world had a Spanish flu. The topic that we have today, the theme that we have, health and healing. And for those who are wondering, the third John has only one chapter. So if you are wondering whether this is a chapter or a verse, it's the verse. And we are going to consider these two as introduction to the seven habits that I'm going to. And I'm, I apologize to Stephen Covey, a man who wrote the seven habits of highly effective people. That was where I picked the idea of the topic form. Not the message, but the topic. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. If you have your phone and you're using it for, to, you know, to, to check the scriptures, be careful not to be distracted. God has something to say. And I trust the Lord that he's going to, uh, the devil will not distract you so that we can. We are living in an interesting time. We're living in the, in the season of the pandemic. And the truth of the matter is that we desire it as leaders, as Christian leaders, that this will be gone. That is our faith. But the facts are staring us in the face. I'm going to bring you a couple of statistics. Because one of the things I was told last Sunday, you know, talking to, I think Papa is probably the oldest person in our midst. Papa, Papa Idia is Baba Aran. He comes for the first service always. Uh, maybe he hasn't come. Baba told me, I don't know what we were talking about last Sunday. He said, faith does not deny facts. I said, yes. He said, the people who came to Jesus, they knew they were sick. So if Jesus has asked them, are you sick? What do you think the answer will have been? Eh? I'm strong? Eh? I, you know, many years ago, I used to work in a bank. And um, I learned of a particular doctor that was on retainership of the, of the big bank. If I remember, I, I, maybe I just, I, I think I remember his name. I never encountered him, but I learned his name, whether he's still alive, I don't know, Ajeni Fuja. If you went to Ajeni Fuja and you said, doctor, I think I have malaria fever. I said, you have diagnosed yourself. Since you know what to do, you can go home. If you can diagnose yourself, it means you also know the, if you go to the doctor, you keep your mouth shut, except he asks you questions. Amen? If you are sick, you say to God, who, the maker, who is also the remaker, I am sick. I need your help. Amen? Amen? Are you here? Praise the name of Jesus. Let me give you some statistics, not to frighten you, but to tell you the reality of the times in which we live and the relevance and the timeliness of the theme that you have for this month. So that God can open your eyes because a whole lot of God's word will be coming your way. And God is going to bless all of us together. Amen. He's going to do miracles here in this church in this month of September to remember in the name of Jesus. Update September 12th, coronavirus cases, global cases. He's the case is 225 million, 120,064 up to date. Cases, deaths, 4,638,780. People who have and people are still dying. It's not to frighten you. What's the statistics for Nigeria? It's, nine, it's 199 and 54. They just had it plus 54. Maybe just this morning, overnight. Because the keep is a, is, a, is, a, is a meter. You know, they keep checking it. How about debt? Debt is 2,592. 
brothers and sisters, this is not the real picture of the Nigerian case. You know why? We don't do a lot of testing. How many people here, you are feeling uncomfortable and you have gone to do tests? Some people here, it has taken God's grace for them to, they've gone through coronavirus up and down. Am I right? Am I right? They've taken Agbo and the rest of them. Thank God it has worked for you, but it does not mean that you have not gone through it. That the fact that you have not tested does not mean that you have not had it. Are you listening to me? Uh, respond, please. Hallelujah. So we're living in an interesting time. And I'm not here to frighten you, but to make available the provision of God, particularly for the younger generation and then for the rest of us. September 10 was World Suicide Prevention Date. This church sent me to Luth, and uh, I think Sister Pastor Beauty Osua, we went, and we went to be trained, you know, they invited faith base because they said when people have mental cases, the first place is that they go to their church or they go to the mosque, most likely. They won't go to the hospital first, and it's true. But I tell you honestly, the devil is very wicked. He's very, the devil is very wicked. I learned something many years ago from a pastor friend of mine who was sick and he was in hospital. I visited him. I went to the hospital to pray for him and he was recovering. One of the things he told me, he said, the devil is the master of deception. He said, when a case is medical, it will make you think it's spiritual only. Are you listening to me? Are you still listening to me? When it's spiritual, it will, think, it will think, make you think it's medical. So you go like that woman from one doctor to another. I tell people, your best bet in the world, the dangerous world in which we live, the savage world in which they live, is to do what they call in, in malaria treatment, combination therapy. Hallelujah. We are foursquare. We believe in medical science. We are four square. We believe that God has given man wisdom, you know, for human flourishing. We are not one of those organizations. We believe in divine healing, but we believe that medical practice, we have gifted doctors among us. One of the best nephrologists in this country, some of the best gynecologists, some of the best doctors, they are in this organization. Amen. We not only believe in that, we build hospitals. Amen. So if anybody is saying, ah, 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 but we believe in divine healing, and so we, we don't believe in medical practice, that is the lie of Satan, just to cheat you. Hallelujah. I'm building this background because there are people here, there are people around the world, people are dying because of ignorance. People are dying because they are living in denial of what is real, and they have not taken the provision that God has provided. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. We're going to go back to mental health uh, because that's a particular area of interest for me because of young people. This is blast service. So the first thing is understanding health and healing. I like this topic and I'm grateful to our leaders. I'm grateful to the resident pastor. There is a difference between health and healing. A lot of people don't know that. By the time we look briefly at our scriptures and we run through the seven habits, even if I can't finish because of our time, it, we, you know, it will still be done. But we need to understand scriptures. The two texts given to us, and I'm going to read, is very, very important. There is a difference between health and healing, and it's clearly shown in the scriptures. What happens to many people in churches? Many Christians are only focused on healing. They don't focus on health. God, this morning, we want us to focus on health and not just on healing. God is the great physician. There is no doubt about it. He can heal you when you have gotten into health trouble. He can heal you when you have health emergencies. But he can also make you whole and healthy. Hallelujah. Say amen to that. It was Bill Clinton that once said, he said, when you have run your life, when you have been reckless about your health, you can't then come in the old age and start screaming and then getting religious about health. And he could tell because he grew up with, um, what they call it now, fast food. He likes hamburgers and, you know, all of those things. 
if I got it right, he was even eating in. He was sending for them. They told him it wasn't good for his head. They were sending, sending for fast food when he was in the White House. He was the one who said that because he had done four bypasses. You know what, what bypasses are? Doctors are here, medical practitioners. I'm not a doctor, but I know one or two things because I am health conscious. I try to be. I don't want to die before my time. I don't want to die cheap death. I tell you, when you hear Tunde Ojo is gone, that is his time. What I say to many people, many of my friends is in Yoruba, if, if I don't die in 20 years, and it's going to be more than that, nobody can put me six feet below. Well, some people are dead before they are die, dead. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. We're going to focus on young people, mental health, and the rest of them. But you know, let's 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 just get this. Let's just get this right. Health is different from healing. It's in the scriptures. It's even the definition of health. And we are going to we are going to quickly look at it. What is health? WHO, the World Health Organization, defines health as a state, and I quote: a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Let's take that again. WHO defines health as, I quote, a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. What is healing? Healing has been defined simply as the act act or process of curing or of restoring to health. So the critical thing is health. Health is the, is the baseline for everything. How do people move from health to disease? It's a study by medical practice all over the world. By scientists, how do people move from health to disease? It's a process of getting well. Healing is the act or process of curing or of restoring to health. Praise the name of Jesus. Our text this morning, Jeremiah 3, 33, 6, and I'm going to read it quickly. Uh, you can put that on, the media can help us. It says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Now, I don't have all the time to do an exposition. But it's important to, to lay the context of this. It's important that we're talking about God's people in captivity. All right? And the prophets said, look, this is what I'm going to do. They have messed up their lives this way because of sin, because of idolatry. And I'm going to do this. He said, I'm going to give you health and cure. Now, let's see how this is put in NIV. And I like the way it is put. It said, nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people, and I will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. There is no one that can enjoy abundant peace and security without good health. Do you agree with me? I answer now. Are you still in church? Are you forced to come to church? Ah, hallelujah. First square, Yaba, please respond. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Nobody can enjoy abundance of peace. Young people, you have dreams of greatness. Once your health fails, your dream vanishes. In the week, was it yesterday or so, I learned of a, of a, of a footballer, European footballer, must be young, of American, of a, you know, African descent, I can't remember his name, who was in coma for, I just saw the headline, he was in coma for 39 years. He's just died. Was that the kind of life you want? How can anybody make progress while being in coma for 39 years? It's as good as death. Almost. They just didn't want to pull the plug. Praise the name of Jesus. So it's, there is a difference. You can't live abundance of peace. You can't have prosperity without your health, without a good health. When your health suffers, your dream vanishes. Oh, you are a young person, you have dreams of greatness, 
You want to become this, you want to do that, you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a tech giant, you want to run companies, you want to run ministry, you want to do stuff for God. That can only be when you're healthy. Praise the name of Jesus. A healthy man focuses on nothing. On a healthy man. A diseased man focuses on nothing but that disease. He will say, oh, I can give everything. I'll be healthy. A former general overseer, Dr. Obadi, Wilson Badejo, of blessed memory, very soon it will be a time to celebrate, to celebrate his departure. Once told of a story, he visited Igobi, and he went there to pray, and, an old, and a, a man just said, Pastor, please pray for me. And then he opened the curtain, and he said, look, this is what is left out of five cars. I sold everything so that I can be healthy. At Igobi, he said, Pastor, pray for me. They say, I have five houses. With the exception of the one in which I'm living, I've sold everything so that I can have health. Have good health. He said, Pastor, please pray for me. And he said he had to pray for him. So without taking a whole lot of our time, because we really don't have, quite a, we don't have a lot of time this morning, and we have a lot to do, it's important to know that it's when health which means by the Hebrew word in that text, it means wholeness. The ten lepers were healed, but only one that returned received what? Wholeness. Wholeness is health plus plus. It's not healing, just healing. Healing comes usually when health has failed. Sometimes healing and health, they work simultaneously. It depends on how God wants to package it for you. But I tell you, you don't need, you don't need healing when you are healthy. Thank you, sir. You are nodding. That means I'm not preaching heresy. Thank you very much, sir. My resident pastor is agreeing with me. Hallelujah. That's a shot in the hands. Praise the name of Jesus. Many people don't know. You know, I, I, I hope we'll have time so that I'll be able to share my story. I'm still, I'm, I'm still slim compared to a lot of people in my age. Although I'm, I'm developing some, you know, um, uh, you know, thank God for the pandemic. I'm the same person that the first time I went to the U.S., one of the ministers in this organization said, Tunde, you went to the U.S. and you came back looking the same. He said, there's no hope for you again. <laughs> Now, but I had a very bad habit. My wife told me, because I grew up poor, I didn't have egg to eat when I was growing up. All right? So when I could afford it, I was like, boil egg, fry egg for me. Ah, you know, the egg, the egg that I didn't find to eat when I, when I was growing up. And my wife was warning me, it's not healthy to be eating egg this way. I said, look, leave me alone. You are not a doctor, you are a teacher. I know two of your sisters are doctors. If they have told me this, I will listen. When I started feeling chest pain, I did a cholesterol test, and my cholesterol level was high. I used to think it's people with body mass. All right? Wrong. I was wrong. The reading was cholesterol level high. You know the meaning of that? If it keeps going high like that over a period of time, you are joking with stroke. You are joking with stroke. I know there are elders here. They are frying eggs as if they are babies for them. Anui Shemi. That's what my first daughter. That is her, that is her, that when, she, when she's distraught, you know, with her kid or with her sisters. And brother, I will say, I know shame I pity your condition. Somebody has said, you know why the men generally outlive the women? The women outlive the men. They give them four pieces of meat to eat. They literally, the men are digging their graves by the time they say, am I not the end of this family? You turn yourself to a lion. You are digging your grave. I pray that that will not be your. And then you then turn to God and say, what is it? 
Lord, help me. Meanwhile, when you are eating Bokoto at Bodhi Shaki, FEC, Tozo, Ijegude, may God deliver us in Jesus' name. Health is more important than healing. God has given both. But I would rather be healthy than start begging God and asking God and going to the mountain top and going to a visit for healing. Young people, you have an advantage. And I'm going to share the advantage very briefly. The second one is the prayer by John the Apostle to Gaius, his very dear friend. It's a desire, it's a prayer, it's a promise of God. It expresses the will of God. I love it so much. And that is what we found in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. And I quickly read. And I'm going to read it. It says, Beloved, you know, I like King James. But many times, I know that when we read King James, many young people don't understand it. So I'm going to read it in New Living Translation. Beloved, I wish above all things that this is parity. I wish above all things this is high parity. In my office, we call it HP, high parity. Every task is divided into three. High parity, medium parity, low parity. This is high parity. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prosper. Now, you don't understand that very well until you start reading it in other translation. I'm going to bring you in NLT. It said, dear friend, I hope all is well with you. And that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Now let me give you another translation. And I think it's NIV. It's a dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health. Hallelujah. May you enjoy good health. May you enjoy good health. And that all may go well with you. Even as your soul is getting along well. Some truths are here. I'm going to run after. Those seven habits are practical. They are practical steps. I'm going to run through them. And if I can't, then we're just, we're just going to be satisfied with this. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. It's important to know that health issues are parity issues. But as health issues are parity, there is nothing is of a higher priority is soul health. The health of your soul. He said, first thing is that I know your soul is prospering. I know that your soul is saved. I know that you are getting along as a Christian. This morning as we're coming to church, we're having a conversation in the car. And I told my children, I said, and we all agreed to be saved is easy by the grace of God. And people will be saved today. But to continue to be a Christian is by faith and a lot of works. To be saved takes nothing, just simple faith in Christ Jesus. By faith alone. But to continue to be a Christian, ah, struggle day there. A friend of mine told me many years ago, he said, there is no resistance free zone on the surface of the earth where you can just walk in, you know, like a dastically and you pick up, and there's nothing like that on the surface of the earth. Even the promised land, what happened? Did they fight? Or they just walked in there? Were there people there? Answer me now. This is four square Yaba, where we teach the Bible. They went to the promised land. Did they just whistle inside the promised land or they had to fight? They had to fight now. There is nothing like resistance. Young person, young man, young woman, listen to me. You are laying back, you are sitting down as if everything is going to come to you. You are kidding. Your grasp must be beyond your reach. I hope I said that very well. You must stretch if, you must, if your life must get better. You must stretch. Spiritual stretching. Mental stretching. Praise the name of Jesus. That's not why we are here. So it's important that this is parity. Parity number one is the soul health. Parity number two is that you must, your body must experience good health. He said, you are my friend. I thank God you know the truth. The tragedy of today's church is that people don't understand. They understand spiritual health. They don't understand physical health. 
they don't understand. They, 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 they feel they can eat anything. They feel they can live anyhow. And then when they break down in, you know, in disease, they cry to God and say, God, I have served you all my life. Why is this happening to me? How? Have you asked yourself, how have you been living your life? Are you obeying simple rules of hygiene? They are begging some of us, use this mask. This thing is killing people. Some, some people are still, they're still going around. I know it's shaming. I know it's shaming. Because by the time I tell my story, if we have the time, out of six people in the house, five of us were coronavirus positive. Five. We have to quarantine the six person. Oh, I bless the Lord for my wife. I bless the Lord for my wife. We pray about health. We pray about issues. And we seek God or their help. Thank God for our sister who, you know, works in a place where you can do it. It was free. We carry all of us down there. And we were all positive. Five of us positive. Father, mother, and the rest of us. With the exception of one person. I'm talking about my children, young people. Don't fool yourself. Ah, cooking mama day is a lie. I'm a young, young person. Don't, don't die cheap death. And I want to tell you here, there is a lot of controversy, I mean, uh, what they call it, uh, conspiracy theories about vaccine. Discount it. Go and get the jab. Are you listening to me? I believe I have the authority of the Lord to say what I'm saying. We believe in medical practice. Go and get the job. Forget about all of those things. Somebody has, a, somebody has a platform. For example, my son told me Ronaldo has how many, how many people on his platform? Over 300 million people. If he says, I don't believe in coronavirus, at least 75% of people on the platform will see it. Is he a doctor? Is he a doctor? Is a footballer. You are allowing influencers, people who are not subject matter experts. Even in the case of medical practice, pastors are not experts, except they are medical doctors. Am I right, sir? It was in Ajebo. God opened my eyes. One of our speakers, I can't remember now, he said, you need role models in many areas. If your pastor is not a banker, he can pray for you, but he cannot cancel you about banking. Am I right, sir? Because he doesn't know it. And if he's a honest, sincere, a man of integrity, a woman of integrity, you say, mine is to pray for you, I will cancel you as the Spirit of God is leading me. But there is a brother or a sister who has an experience in this place. Who fears the Lord? Who is going to give you godly counsel? Amen. Amen. Well, we went through treatment. Because of our time, we went through treatment. We were quarantined. We were in church. We didn't want to embarrass the church. We said, okay, we're healed. But as often as many people who are close enough, we said, look, don't come here. It's coronavirus. May you never have to go through the pains. But God in his mercy healed us. So what I'm saying is I would rather not have coronavirus than having to go through coronavirus and start praying for God's healing. Are you listening to me? Three weeks, we went back there after taking some medication and a lot of prayers. Thank God for a good church. Thank God for our leaders praying for us because we share it. There is nothing to be ashamed of. There is nothing to be ashamed of. If you are down, you need God's help. You need the help of godly people too. Amen. Amen. We are too secretive in our culture. I remember when Fela died of HIV. It was his brother who declared to the old world. Ulikwe Ransom Kuti was the minister of health. He said, Fela died of HIV. Ah, people say that you do that to your own brother. That is the wahala that we find ourselves. My father was down with cancer of the liver. I don't know where he went recently and he was taking a go. Hey, mama, go more, I beg you in the name of God. I know some of you, you grew up with it. 
But the toxicity, you don't know. Agbo is toxic. You don't know the dosage. One buffoon, homo, you don't know. Well, he has said, Jekin Katodano, let me, let me wee wee it. And don't, please, don't try stunts. You will kill your liver. I'm begging you in the name of God. I know you grew up with it. But the issue is that health issue, they start showing over a period of time. They don't happen, they don't happen overnight. You said, this is him, Agbo. My father took and he lived 100 years. Thank you. He wasn't eating burger. He was probably walking three kilometers to his farm. He was not eating food, all kinds of food. He is not taking or about two, 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 two in a day. Let me enjoy myself. People are just digging their grave. They're just digging their grave for what they eat. May the Lord deliver us. Health is better than healing. I'd rather be healthy and strong than start crying God for healing. Of course, there's provision in the Bible. He's a great physician. He has made that available to, to us. Praise the name of Jesus. My time is up. We'll have another opportunity for me to share the seven habits. But I come this morning, particularly young people, Suicide is on the rise. I have the statistics here. I don't want to bother you with it. Suicide is on the rise. And those who are predisposed to suicide are people who the devil has suggested to their mind that they should take their lives. The truth of the matter is that there are not many people that have not had the thought of suicide before. Am I right? Yes, or now. But some people can say no to Satan. And they can seek medical help when they need it. They can seek spiritual help in addition when they need it. Shall we rise? Shall we rise? Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. I'm going to make two calls. Your name is Yahweh. My time is up. Your so I want you to respond in time. Walking. Your name is Yahweh. Amen. Sorry, you, you have not given your life to Christ. I want you to come. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. Just come. You're young or you are mature. You are my age. Those of us who are already on the sixth floor. You want to give your heart to Jesus. You've been, you've been living your life outside of God. You, although you've been coming to church. Or you are online. Please just come. Please just come. Anyone? Anybody you want to give your life to Christ? That's the first call. Anybody please? Please raise up your hand. You want to give your heart to Jesus. That's the foundation of everything that he does for us. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to believe that we are all, we are saved, we are on our way to heaven. Amen. Your name is you, want, you want healing this morning. You want healing this morning. The resident pastor is here. The Bible says, anyone sick, let him call the other, let them anoint him with the other. To you, it is miracle. Healing is the children's bread. Please come here. All you have had, you are suffering from mental health. You are having the thought of suicide. You are young or you are old. Please just come. You are Yahweh. Please come here. Please. I am too small. 
those who are the online, please, I want you to do the same thing we are doing here. And there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. You will get here. Miraculously. As I step in this morning and I knelt down, I was shocked when God said, I'm going to heal my people today. I will heal my people today. The same way he spoke to Jeremiah, he's confirming it today. And the healing is taking place. For it is written, Is anyone sick among us? Call the elders. Let them pray over them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Anointing them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Sozo. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. It is not the man, it is not the leader. But God shall raise them up. Jesus shall raise them up. Jesus shall raise you up this morning. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. It doesn't matter the name of the sickness. Right now, as the oil touches you, you are healed. You are healed. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord lift you up. The Lord heal you. The same way he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you are healed. You are in hell. So, by this oil this morning, I ask, O oh Lord, according to your word, in obedience, we apply the oil and we pray over them in the name of the Lord. They are healed already. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are here. 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 The Lord hear you. The Lord hear you. According to his word, you are here this morning. 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 You are here. Eco Secalibosa. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. You sent your word, and your word healed them and delivered them from all their troubles. In the evening, they brought the sick to you, and you cast out the demon by your word. And you eat all the sick according to your word. We have anointed them with oil. And according to your word, I pray over all of you in the name of Jesus. 
And I declare you healed in Jesus' name. Every spirit of sickness in this body, hear the word of God. Pack your Lord and get out of this body in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, get out in Jesus' name. Spirit of sickness, get out in Jesus' name. I call that sickness, die. I cause every sickness in your body, I rebook it, die. And I declare you here right now. You are healed in Jesus' name. Your body is healed in Jesus' name. Your soul is healed in Jesus' name. Every aspect of you, I declare you every with all in Jesus' name. And the Lord Jesus shall raise you up. The Lord raise you up. And your testimony shall abide. Thank you, Lord, because it is so. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. You can shake your body. Instantly you are here, you can come back for testimony. Because I believe the Lord has healed you. Shake your body. Instantly you are here, come back for testimony. Thank you. God bless you.